a while. 2-0 to this team is a mega start. <laughs> yep. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cleveland Stadium. Tom Hamlin and Chris Collinsworth. I don't see any dog bites on you. You survived the dog pound. I'm scared to take the truth. <laughs> that game, the Cleveland win over Pittsburgh, was one of the most dramatic of the season, but a change for the Browns. Bernie Kosar has regained his quarterback spot with the injury to Vinny Testaverde. Yeah, and I really think that Bernie Kosar may be under more pressure now than he has been at any time during the course of his career. But what a great opportunity this football game is for Bernie Kosar. Not only can he make up for the three losses in the AFC Championship games to the Denver Broncos and John Elway, but also a chance maybe to regain the confidence of his head coach, Bill Belichick. And of course, John Elway, the man that owns the Cleveland Browns. Browns kicking off with a short kick taken by Derek Russell of the Broncos. Russell cuts up, still picking his way forward. And gets to the outside and briefly breaks free. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. 20-yard return by Derek Russell. Stacy Hairston saved a further gain. Good return for the Broncos to open the game. Let's take a look at John Elway's starting Bronco offensive unit now. Elway 4-1 at Cleveland Stadium. Gary Zimmerman, the acquisition from the Vikings, keying that offensive line at the left tackle spot. Elway's having a great year. Fourth rated quarterback of the AFC. Bernstein the leading rusher. There you see the four wides with Sharp moving to a wide receiver. Milburn and Marshall coming in. Pitch to Rod Bernstein. Bernstein cracks to the outside. Knocked out of bounds after a gain of two or three yards. Clay Matthews, Anthony Pleasant on the stop for the Browns who line up this way on defense with Burnett Jones, Michael Dean Perry. Of course, Jerry Ball will get in the game shortly. Pepper Johnson, the acquisition from the Giants starting at the linebacker spot. David Brandon has been released. There's your secondary. And when the passing situation faces the Browns defense, their dime will have Hilliard and Spear as extra defensive backs. Tom, it's interesting that Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos, was telling me yesterday that the strength of this Cleveland Browns defense goes right down the line. You talk about the defensive line is their strength with James Jones and Michael Dean Perry and Jerry Ball and Rob Burnett. The linebackers are the next best group and that that defensive secondary is the weakness. They feel like that they'll have a good chance to take advantage of that today. That's Mustafa who's limping off the field. He's been replaced by Randy Hilliard at the right quarterback spot. Elway's first pass. Bernstein across the middle. A gain of three or four yards. Pepper Johnson wraps him up, and Elway will face third down. Tom, very significant that Najee Mustafa went off the field because of the fact that this past week, Everson Walls, the longtime cornerback in the National Football League, was waived by the Cleveland Browns. It was something that caused a great deal of controversy amongst the defensive teammates, and now they lose Mustafa on the first play. Third and two for the Broncos. Bernstein and Del Pino, the split backs. Del Pino in motion. Pressure Elway completes a pass to Johnson. Vance Johnson knocked out of bounds at about the 43 yard line. There's a penalty marker down. 14 yards if it stands. Terry Taylor bumped him out of bounds. First penalty coming up. Jerry Mark Bright is the referee. Holding against the Browns. So the 14 yard gain will stand. Holding number 53 defense penalty is declined. First down. Pepper Johnson on the hole. John Elway not having much trouble at all here in the early going throwing the football really not a tremendous pattern by Vance Johnson. Randy Hilliard just not able to stay with him. Lynn Milburn in the game now behind Elway. First down play from the Cleveland 42. Milburn, his first carry in two games, inside the Cleveland 40 down to the 38-yard line. 
Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator, said they really wanted to try and work Glenn Milburn into the game a little more because of the fact that he draws so much double coverage on the passing downs. And the significance of that being that you can no longer use an extra player on the defense to spy John Elway. John Elway's made so many big plays running with the football. Glenn Milburn takes that away from a defense. Milburn, the rookie second round draft choice from Stanford. He's out of the game. Bernstein returns. Ron Bernstein tries to get the corner, has a block there, and cuts up inside the 35 to the 32 of the Browns, stopped there by Mike Johnson. Rod Bernstein has really seen his production increase the last few weeks. Before the bye, Bernstein had 103 yards rushing against the Raiders. Then last week, had 111 yards of total offense against Seattle, 64 rushing, 47 receiving, catching a season-high six passes. Formerly a tight end, of course, moved to running back, and Michael Dean Perry says he's not running like a tight end anymore. He's a bear out there. In fact, the Bronco coach is pleased the last few weeks that he started lowering the pads and running the way he did when he played for the Chargers. Third and one. Bernstein. Still going. Lowers his head and pounds inside the 25-yard line, carrying Stevon Moore along with him. That's the power of Rod Bernstein, 6'3", nearly 240 pounds. And the significance of this is that they have backed Rod Bernstein up in the backfield. He was very uncomfortable early in the season. They were playing out of split backs. Wade Phillips, the head coach of the Broncos, said that, hey, we just weren't taking advantage of his skills. Now they've backed him up in the eye, and he has really begun to dominate. Bernstein and Delpino in the eye. Delpino the up back. Bernstein the tailback. First down from the 24. This is the opening drive of the game. Play action pass from Elway. And the pass complete to Reggie Johnson, the tight end, who found a spot at about the 12-yard line. Mustafa back in the game stopped him. It'll be first down Broncos, though. This is an impressive opening drive. And the key on this play was the protection. Michael Dean Perry is being double teamed by Dave Wydell and John Melander, just the same way they did Cortez Kennedy against Seattle last week. A little, uh, little hug for Elway at the end of that one. Pleasant just wanted to let him know he was there. From the 13, first down Broncos. Del Pino and Lynn. And straight ahead to uh, Reggie Rivers. Gets the carry. And Anthony Pleasant stops him after a short game. Reggie Rivers in his third year from Southwest Texas actually was the second leading rusher for the Broncos in 1992. Has only carried a less than 10 times this season. Really surprising the fact that he hasn't been a bigger part of the offense, but Robert Del Pino and Glenn Milburn now in this offense has really taken over his role. They're working it in the dog pound. It's the ninth play of the opening drive of the contest. Bernstein and Del Pino are split. Elway chased from the pocket. Dives down at the seven yard line, covered there by Rob Burnett and Mike Johnson. That's a habit that Jim Fossil has been desperately trying to break John Elway of. When he breaks free and when he scrambles, he wants him to keep his eyes down the field, keep his body in a position to throw the football, and then slide. Slide feet first. He hates the way that he goes in head first. Said that's how he got hurt a season ago. Third and three. the gun. Elway has Bernstein to his left. Elway threads the needle at to Shannon Sharp. Stevon Moore keeps him out of the end zone, but it will be a Bronco first down. Shannon Sharp, of course, the brother of Sterling Sharp. He's got a $20,000 bet with his brother who has the most catches on the season. That makes 38 now for Shannon. Unfortunately, his big brother has 50 and looks pretty secure. I like the story he told us about uh, two weeks ago when his brother had the four touchdown passes. Shannon wasn't home, but he got four messages on his answering machine. <laughs> what a drive. Elway has not missed a pass. He's four for four. First and goal from the Browns, two. Fumble. The whistle blew it dead, I believe. Eric Turner recovered the fumble. Let's see if it'll be Brown's football. Penalty markers are down. A 
I thought I heard the whistle before the play I ever got started. I think there was procedure before the snap, which automatically kills the ball. We have a false start on the center. Illegal snap, quick snap, no play prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. And there's a case where the penalty benefits the offending team. Dave Wydell, obviously some kind of a double pump before the snap. A tremendous break for John Elway and the Broncos. No question the Cleveland Browns had recovered that football. Once again, a charmed life for John Elway and company. There it is. Now from the seven, first and goal. Elway being chased for the end zone, wide open, but out of the end zone, incomplete for Russell. Clay Matthews was... Coming after Elway, he had to get rid of it. Russell was wide open. And that's Najee Mustafa, who's back in the game. He slipped on the turf, and Elway just gave one away. His man was wide open, and he didn't get him the football, and John knew it. He just gave up his 13th touchdown. First quarter, 7-39. The Broncos with a long drive to open the game. From the gun. Bernstein and Del Pino. Handoff. Del Pino only to the five, and he might have fumbled. The Browns have it. Rob Burnett has recovered the Del Pino fumble. touchdowns a week ago he is getting a much bigger role in the offense you could see the ball came loose and it looked like he was lying on top of Jerry Ball and that's what kept him from hitting the ground before he made the fumble big break for the Cleveland Browns they'll have the ball for the first time when we return comfortable with all your decisions. Acura. Some things are worth the price. Save right now. Buy three Goodyear tires at the regular price. Get the fourth tire free. That's right. Buy any three of these Goodyear tires at the regular price and get the fourth free. Four for three now. Hurry, sale ends soon. For the first time, there's a saw that combines a 12-amp motor, dust collection, and an auto brake. So there's no limit to what you can build. Introducing the Quantum Circular Saw, new from Black & Decker. There are so many people trying to figure so many ways to rip you off now that it's very hard by yourself to, to, to uh, counter all these things. Citibank called one night at 7 o'clock. Apparently, someone had bought nine tickets to Vegas, gambled, and invited nine of their best friends. You, that's why, you know, having somebody watch your back is good. Citibank realized that I would not made those charges, and it got taken care of. It just makes you feel like you have an ally out there. Just a few of the many people who rely on the security of not just Visa, Citibank Visa. Jerry Ball is right in the middle of your screen working on number 75, and Del Pino just falls on top of him. Ordinarily, his knee would have hit the ground and would have been down, but when he fell on top of Ball, there was time for the Cleveland defense to strip it away, and Rob Burnett ended up landing on it. So a long Bronco drive comes for naught, and the Browns have the ball at their own nine-yard line. That's Ron Wolfley in motion. Kozar handing off to Tommy Vardell, and Vardell rips up the middle to the 20-yard line. Gain of 11 for Varnell on his first carry. Tackled by Simon Fletcher. And here is a look at Bernie Kozar and his offense. Kozar, three touchdowns, three interceptions. He's offensive line keyed by Steve Everett, the rookie center, who's having an outstanding initial campaign. Kozar has Metcalf with him. He's the second leading rusher, top receiver. Vardell, the leading ground gainer. Michael Jackson, the big play receiver. 
And the three wide brings in Lawyer Tillman for an extra wide receiver. They're trying to make him into the possession receiver this week. Play action pass. Kozar in trouble. And he's sacked back at the 15 yard line. Loss of five. Tommy Vardell was kept in to block, and the man just ran right over Vardell. Greg Cragen gets credit for the sack. And Tom, this is the biggest question mark that I have about this Browns offense. Can they protect Bernie Kosar in the pocket? They had success in protecting Vinny Testaverde when he got outside the pocket and they can move it around a little bit. Can they protect Bernie in the pocket because he's not going to be moving outside? Second and 15, three wides in for the Browns. Lawyer Tillman in with Carrier and Jackson. by the Bronco defense. Simon Fletcher and Mike Kroll combining to stop Hoard. Here's the way the Broncos line up defensively. Cragen already has the first sack of the game. Mecklenburg and Fletcher, the big sack leaders, the big play men on the Bronco front. That secondary features two of the finest safeties in the game, Smith and Atwater. And when the Broncos go to their Tiger defense, Lilo Lang comes in, and it's his job today to try to stop Eric Metcalf. Broncos best in the league on third down. Third and 15 for Kozar. He sends Carrier in motion. Kozar steps and delivers that sidearm toss way out of bounds and incomplete. And the Browns will have to punt. And before they do, let's go to New York. Jim Lampley at NFL Live for an update. Jim. Tom, let's look at the first touchdown of the day in the Astrodome. Opening drive for the Oilers. Warren Moon on fire. Hits AFC leading receiver Webster Slaughter from three yards out. Oilers lead 7-0. Could make Rick Meyer's job even tougher. Back to Tom and Chris. All right, Jim. And here at uh, Cleveland Stadium, no score. Each team with one possession. Broncos with a long drive, then a fumble inside the Cleveland 10. And the Browns stopped on their first possession. So Brian Hansen will punt. You see his number second in the AFC. And Glenn Milbert, who averages nearly 11 a return, says uh, stay away from it. He'll let it bounce. Short punt, but gets a pretty decent roll. In fact, it'll be about the 45-yard line of the Broncos. 40-yard punt in a scoreless first quarter. After all these years, Watson, the trail is decidedly cold. But Holmes, it's quite warm in here. All these years. Curiously cozy. No. Fiendishly clever. Observe, Watson. Warm house, many years. It must be... A Lennox. Elementary, my dear Watson. For home heating, for cooking, for hot water, use clean, natural gas. America's best energy value. that turned anybody into Rachel Hunter, the supermodel. Ralph, would you take me for a walk? Cool. Ralph, we gotta work all weekend. All weekend. And your special potion turned ordinary beer in a can into Keystone, Keystone Light and Keystone Dry. Specially lined for really smooth bottle beer taste. Ralph, mind if I join your party? Sure, Bert. Come on over. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Acura. Some things are worth the price. By Keystone, Keystone Light and Keystone Drive. Bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? By New Sierra. It's not just antifreeze, it's safety freeze. And by Schick Tracer. It traces every curve on your face. Venerable Cleveland Stadium, the scene of so many great football games over the years, built during the Depression in the 30s on the shores of Lake Erie, and one of the focal points of downtown Cleveland, a downtown that is rapidly being renovated. Wade Phillips brings his Bronco team in with a 4-3 and three record. 
and back in the hunt in the AFC West after beating Seattle last week while both the Raiders and the Chiefs were losing. And Phillips knows where his bread is buttered. John Elway is his man. He's retooled this offense around him. He says, when we won, our offense dominates. From the 46, first down for the Broncos. Rod Bernstein, the lone setback. Elway's got a screen to Bernstein. Blockers in front, and Bernstein lowers his head and. A flag comes in late after a 13-yard gain. Mustafa and Caldwell banging Bernstein down, but a very late flag. See some scores of other games. There's that slaughter touchdown we heard about. Holding. Number 79, offense. Ten yard penalty. First down. Dave Wydell with his second penalty of the game. Moving over for uh, into the center position for Keith Karch, who's out with the broken hand. Watch the center. He's going to jump out in front, right in here, and in front of the screen pass. I thought he made a brilliant block from our angle, but apparently. Once he got at the legs of the defensive back, you can see the takedown. Nice call by the officials. Randy Hilliard was simply taken down by Dave Wydell. It's first and 20 now, back at the 39. Bernstein, blockers in front to midfield. Eric Turner got him by the ankles, but really blocking well for Rod Bernstein on the corners today. It was interesting. I talked with Dennis Smith yesterday, the safety man for the Denver Broncos. And I asked him, I said, is there anybody that you tackle in the National Football League that ever made you flinch? He said, yeah, Rod Bernstein. And I'm sure glad, <laughs> sure glad that big lug is on my team. Bernstein averaging over seven yards a carry here in the first quarter. Joined by Del Pino now in the I formation. Pitch to Bernstein. Del Pino can't get the block that time, and he stopped for a loss of one by Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson made the play, but Najee Mustafa, number 48, really set it up. Watch him on the corner. He's going to come up and take on the lead blocker, Robert Del Pino, and completely stack up the play. Great play by Najee Mustafa. That's what you have to do is a rolled-up cornerback, come out there, take on the lead blocker, and just stack it up. Mike Johnson then cleaned it up. Great play by Mustafa. Four wides in the game. Three of them set to the right. Milburn to the left. Milburn in the slot left. As caught by Milburn, just short of the first down. He's at about the 45-yard line where he's covered by Eric Turner. Milburn lining up slot left, just short of the first down. And a mistake by the young rookie, Glenn Milburn, as the Browns' defense gets a nice ovation. But Milburn, in that situation, you've got to go up to first down yardage. And here comes the man. <laughs> 17.4 leads the NFL, but what about the big play potential? 91 and 75 yards against the Steelers in his last game, including that game winner with just a couple of minutes left. And a timeout. Tom, the unbelievable thing about that game last week was that after the first punt return, Eric Metcalf went up to Michael Jackson, the wide receiver, and said, I feel another one. I think I'm going to have two punt returns for touchdowns in this game. He told us yesterday that the first one was routine, the 91-yarder. That was just routine. <laughs> he said the second one, though, was like an out-of-body experience. <laughs> it was for me, too. I agree. <laughs> well, the Steeler, uh, the uh, you got me thinking Steelers again. The Browns have called a timeout. They had 12 men on their punt return team. That could be why they've been so successful. <laughs> they had to call a timeout. Want to welcome you back from the Breeders' Cup as you uh, pull the all-nighter last night, the red eye coming in, and uh, a great day of horse racing yesterday. If I'd have had the sense to bet on Arkong, I could have bought my own plane to come back. That's what I told him. I said, if Tom bet on Arkong at uh, whatever it was, 120 to 1, he's not coming to the game. <laughs> Numbers all straight. Cleveland had to burn a timeout, and Metcalf resumes his position. You see the Broncos have had great coverage. Bruin with a high kick. Metcalf. 
Metcalf calls for the fair catch and takes it at the 15. Beautiful high kick. It only covered 30 yards, but it took away the big play potential of Eric Metcalf. My daughter, Gabi, is the fifth generation of flying Cavallinis. And I teach her real strength comes from the heart. Someday she'll teach this to her children. And in their hearts, they too will fly. At John Nuveen and Company, we believe our strongest bond is human. Ask your investment advisor. I was tired, listless. My hair looked bad. My dog moved away. My life was as bland as your average chicken sandwich. Then I tried McDonald's new McGrilled Chicken. Now this was different. A marinated chicken breast with Monterey Jack, sweet red onion, tangy herb dressing on a bakery roll. Well, things changed. My hair looks great. My dog came home and we struck oil in the backyard. Coincidence? <laughs> we don't think so. Try the new McGrilled Chicken Sandwich. Further proof that what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. You could be this comfortable with all your decisions. Acura. Some things are worth the price. Cleveland Stadium, now exclusively a football stadium, with the Indians moving to their new home next season. We're scoreless, 235 left in the first. And let's take a look at the natural gas quarterback efficiency ratings. Amongst AFC quarterbacks, Joe Montana continues to lead. So does Dan Marino, the two injured quarterbacks. Then Esiason and John Elway in fourth place. Bernie Kosar returning to the fray in tenth place with a 70.8 efficiency rating. From the 16, Browns have a first down. Barnell. Totes it for a gain of a couple. Shane Brunett with a stop for the Broncos. This Browns offense has really struggled offensively against Denver. They played them in each of the last two years, and really it could have been back-to-back -back shutouts for the Denver Broncos defense, but for a late score, a late touchdown two years ago. So the Browns, Bill Belichick, and Bernie Kosar are still looking for answers against this Broncos defense. Browns in first place in the AFC Central, but their statistics are so bad you'd never believe it. They do have that big play potential, though. Kosar's pass to Carrier. Dodges one man and takes it to the 30. 11-yard gain and a Cleveland first down. Tyrone Braxton tackled Carrier, and it's welcome back to Mark Carrier, who went out of the Steeler game on the third play with an injury. Does this look like a Brian Brennan route right here? This is what the Cleveland Browns worked on. They stayed after practice almost every day this week and worked on some of the short ball control type passing game that Bernie Kosar can execute so well. And they are trying to go back to his philosophy of offense and what Bernie Kosar does best. That looked like uh, the Browns of three or four years ago. Give them a first down at their own 30. A minute 15 left first quarter. We're scoreless. Bardell hit in the backfield and spun down at the 25 by Mike Kroll. Five-yard loss as Kroll got great penetration and stopped Bardell. Mike Kroll was the rookie of the year in 1991 with 10 sacks. He got his first sack last week against Seattle. I think it is fair to say that Mike Kroll has been having a disappointing season so far this year. He's also been having some trouble uh, in his zone drops and trying to defend the pass. But the last couple of weeks, you've begun to see Mike Kroll play back to the level that he did his rookie year. Second and 15, the Browns with their three-wide formation against Charlie Waters and his nickel defense. Kosar's pass dropped. Dropped by Lawyer Tillman. He's not going to be the possession receiver with uh, hands like that. They went back this week and showed game film of Brian Brennan running exactly that route to try and teach Lawyer Tillman to become the possession receiver. But if you're going to be a possession receiver, you have to possess the ball. 
And Lawyer Tillman cannot drop that pass. There, it could not have been thrown any better by Bernie Kozar. 23 seconds left, first quarter. Third and 15. Draw play to Metcalf. Dancing, dodging, working his way across the 35 to the 37. Short of the first down, tripped up by Dimry and Lang for a gain of 12, but not enough. Come remarkably, Charlie Waters, the defensive coordinator, as you look at Bill Belichick of the Denver Broncos, said that the two running plays he feared most both involved Eric Metcalf, the draw that you just saw, and the counter OT. And we'll end the first quarter at Cleveland Stadium. Nothing, nothing. The Schick Tracer adjusts to your face. Tracer's the only razor with blades that bend and flex for a clean, close, comfortable shave. Schick, we're changing the face of shaving. Watch how fast Dristan nasal spray works. What do you smell? I smelled something. I don't, I don't know what it was. Use Dristan nasal spray. Now smell. That's an orange. Dristan nasal spray worked fast. Dristan nasal spray. Fast, effective relief. People care about the world these days. They just don't want me to put another toxic antifreeze in their car. I mean, who needs toxic? So what if it protects to 70 below? Any antifreeze can do that. Tell me that it's different, safer. Tell me nothing protects better, and it's biodegradable. I mean, what if their dog gets into it? Or their kids? This is serious. It's a changing world. Poison's out. New Sierra. It's not just antifreeze. It's safety freeze. NBC presents Patty Duke in a fiery first-rate performance as Chicago Sun-Times. A suspenseful, sensational motion picture raised TV Guide. A matter of justice, NBC Tonight. And above all the action today, floating one of America's most enduring images, the Goodyear blimp. Goodyear providing our aerial views for today's game. And there is an aerial view of Cleveland Stadium. Chilly afternoon and a fourth down facing the Cleveland Browns in punt formation. As we begin a scoreless game in the second quarter. Second quarter opening with the punt. And Glenn Milburn awaiting the punt and taking it at the 25. To the 31 and then thrown back by the Cleveland special teams led by Randy Baldwin. 38 yard punt. The return by Milburn covered six yards. Broncos ball when we come back to the stadium. Hi, Super Dave Osborne here, getting ready to roll across the country, singing the praises of these great-looking Hager wrinkle-free cotton pants. You know the ones, 100% cotton, wrinkle-free, out of the dryer, no ironing. I'll be covering more than 25,000 miles wearing these beauties. So come out and see me. I just wonder if Hager knows they're paying me by the mile. Uh-oh. Yahoo! Oh! Hager wrinkle-free cottons. 100% cotton, 0% wrinkles. They're still not wrinkled. The Gulf of Mexico, where world-class fishermen like Jim come to battle the big boys. Jim, you got one. <laughs> yeah, hey, this calls for a celebration. How about a cold O'Doul? Thanks. Ah, only 70 calories and not alcohol because out here, you never know what's biting. When you want the refreshing taste of beer without all the alcohol, think O'Doul's. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. As your engine revs higher, the oil forms a hydrodynamic wedge, protecting your engine parts. But as your oil's viscosity breaks down, so can the wedge. That's why Castrol GTX has unique viscosity improvers. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, because if your viscosity breaks down, what's next? Castrol GTX. Now get a free, officially licensed NFL team football when you buy a case of Castrol GTX. Coming up next, the L.A. Raiders, led by quarterback Jeff Hostetler and their tenacious D, blow into the Windy City to take on the Chicago Bears, next on NBC. Time 
Chris Collinsworth at the Cleveland Stadium, where it's with 1449 left in the second quarter. First down, Denver, the ball spotted at their 31 yard line. Elway's having a big start. have devised a scheme for John Elway shorter quicker passes that is supposed to give him better protection and he has had exactly that this year he's been sacked now 18 times that's nine fewer than what he was all of last season but great rush that time by Anthony Pleasant he just shed the block of Gary Zimmerman to get to Elway second and 21 Bernstein nowhere to go Michael Dean Perry, there's a flag down. It'll be against Denver, the illegal motion. Well, after the great start by the Denver Broncos on that initial drive, they've really been shooting themselves illegal in the foot. Illegal motion, number 84, offense. Penalty is declined, third down. Shannon Sharp with the illegal motion. Waved off for the Browns. He is the move guy right here. Will constantly constantly be in motion during the course of the game. Just never got reset. <laughs> you see him sort of say, I don't know what the deal is. Third and 17. From the gun, LA has four lines. Steps up and goes deep. Johnson has. To the 20 yard line, 56 yards. Elway to Johnson, who had beaten Terry Taylor. Everson Walls is gone. Vance Johnson working against what looks like a double team. Eric Turner just didn't get enough depth. Eric Turner had double coverage on the play. Really wasn't so much the fault of Terry Taylor. Eric Turner just didn't get deep enough on the football field. And John Elway and Vance Johnson burns them in a big way. 56 yards for Vance Johnson. Elway's hit seven of his first eight passes. Here is Milburn bouncing to the outside and run out of bounds at about the 10 yard line by Terry Taylor. Right now, let's go to NFL Live in New York. Jim Lampley with an update. Jim? All right, Tom, let's look at the Chargers trying to recreate last season's midseason hot streak. Marion Butts heads into the end zone. No Beavis in sight. <laughs> San Diego leading Minnesota 7-0 in the second quarter from us knuckleheads. Back to you knuckleheads. All right. <laughs> We've given up the Beavis and Butthead stick for this week, I think. We... The dog pound didn't, though. Yeah, right. They had a few comments for me down there. 0-0, <laughs> but the Broncos threatening from the 10 of the Browns. Bernstein hurtling tacklers has three or four yards. Mustafa tripped him up. Check the other scores. Murray with a field goal. Tom, they're on the end of the field now where the baseball infield used to be. And I like what the Broncos are doing. They are running outside the torn up area. The, the, the area between the hash marks is really torn up. Very difficult to get your footing. Two straight sweeps to the outside. Good play call. That side has been down about a month now, but it'll be permanent. No more baseball here. Elway pumps once. Flushed out of the pocket. Hit as he releases the ball incomplete. Jerry Ball gave Elway a shot. And the pass incomplete. I bet you John Elway couldn't believe that Jerry Ball ran him down from behind. Right on the nose tackle, number 93, Jerry Ball getting the double team on this play. And now it's a foot race. John Elway and Jerry Ball, are you kidding me? Jerry Ball by a nose. You watched the Breeders' Cup too long yesterday. You were supposed to be working. Is that man just too sweet or what? By the way, he you heard your comment about the view from the dog pound. No, no, week. no. Don't tell me that. He blamed it on me, though. 
trouble. That's a go. Broken up for a flag. Stevon Moore will be called for interference. Shannon Sharp was the intended receiver, and Moore got there too soon. Tom, the first situation in this ball game where Stevon Moore, who has now had to move up to cover the slot. That's interference. Number 27, defense in the end zone. First down on the one yard line. Stevon Moore is a strong safety trying to cover one of the top wide receivers in the league and Shannon Sharp. That is the position ordinarily that Everson Walls would have Shannon Sharp. It's the first time that that decision has come back to haunt the Browns. First and goal at the one. Bernstein and Del Pino behind Elwood. Bernstein thrown back for the defense. Anthony Pleasant was right in his face, and he got a lot of help from his teammates, Bill Johnson and others. Bill Johnson, number 94, had been sitting over there on the bench and just got all fired up. Just going to stick Rod Bernstein right in the gut. What a tremendous play by Bill Johnson. A lot of people thought he would have been a number one draft choice had he not hurt his knee. Loss of a yard, second and goal. Nobert is in motion, now set wide right. Elway's looking that way, rolling that way, fires! Touchdown! I'm not sure that he came down in bounds, but Clay Matthews on Glenn Milburn, are you kidding me? What kind of a mismatch is that? Now, Clay Matthews is going to knock him out of bounds. That's, a, that's exactly what the officials just called, that Clay Matthews forced Glenn Milburn out of bounds, but the key to that play was by the explosion at the line of scrimmage, shifting Milburn out. They got the mismatch. They got him on Clay Matthews. That is a touchdown. To give credit to the offensive coordinator, Jim Fossil. Extra point by Elam is through. And the rookie, Glenn Milburn, with his third receiving touchdown of the season from Elway has given the Broncos the lead. To make the new Chevy S-Series trucks incredibly quiet, foam plugs, triple sealed doors, and acoustic panels redirect road, engine, and wind noise. Because even the smallest noise can hurt a reputation. The 94 Chevy S-Series, so new from the inside out, everything else is history. For this guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick, antiperspirant that gives 110%. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick, for movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. You know the possibilities of toppings on that deal? Yeah, 10. 1,048,576. Ken was just a ballpark figure. Some ballpark. Little Caesar's favorite five. Two pizzas, five toppings, 798. Pizza, pizza. Introducing the new Shell MasterCard from Chemical Bank. With this MasterCard, when you buy something you want, you earn something you need. Free Shell gasoline. With the new Shell MasterCard from Chemical Bank, average drivers could save 10% of their yearly gasoline costs. You use the card just six times a year and there's no annual fee. To apply for the Shell MasterCard from Chemical Bank, call 1-800-FREE-GAS. Broncos take a 7-0 lead at the 11.06 mark, second quarter, on the Elway pass to Milburn. The significance here, Tom, is that it doesn't matter if Glenn Milburn's feet were inbounds or not. I think they were anyway, but the officials called that Clay Matthews had forced him out, so that foot did not have to come down inbounds. Third touchdown reception for the Stanford, the rookie from Stanford. Elam stick taken by Baldwin at about the three. You hear the pads colliding as Baldwin takes it to the 23-yard line. 20-yard return to stop by Daryl Hall. Tommy Vardell, the starting fullback, who is also on the kickoff cover or return team, 
just absolutely threw one of the most devastating blocks I have seen in a long time. I, I didn't get the number of the player on the Broncos, and I'm sure that guy has turned around looking for the truck himself, but Tommy Vardell doing a little bit of everything out there. Whew, what a lick. Tommy Vardell, the former roommate of Glenn Milburn when they were Stanford teammates. Total domination by Denton. To the 25, only a, a yard gain, maybe two. Mike Kroll having a good game. Trying to get the ball in the hands of Eric Metcalf, Ozzie Newsom, and Bill Belichick. The crowd gave a pretty hearty boo after that first down run call by Bill Belichick, Ozzie Newsom, and company. Their feeling is that against this defense, which ranks last in the National Football League against the pass, you have to throw it on first down. That's why Bernie Kozar fell too. Carrier and Jackson both wide to the right. Eye formation and the handoff to Metcalf from the tailback spot. And he's dropped by Simon Fletcher for a big loss. Understand what the crowd is booing now. They are booing the conservative play calling, period. Eric Metcalf in the eye formation. Tommy Bardell with the lead blocker. But Simon Fletcher, who hasn't had a sack since about the third game this season, has really begun to crank it up in this one. A couple of big plays already. Now, earlier in the game, in the first quarter, the Browns twice had third and 15 and had to punt. Here's a third and 14. You don't throw it on third down against this defense. Play stopped as the flags fly. Fletcher got a head start, but he might have been drawn. I thought I saw Lyman flinch, too. Ordinarily, you'd think it is on the offense if they stop play. False start, number 62, offense. Prior to the snap, five-yard penalty, third down. That's Gene Williams, the right tackle. Gene Williams played so well last week, but already with a mistake here, that drew Simon Fletcher off sides. Really, it was just the opposite. Simon Fletcher moved, and then Gene Williams reacted, but it's still a penalty on the offense. Now third and 19 from the gun. Kozar only has three wides. Jackson to the right. Tillman carrier left. And Kozar on the run tries to get it to Jackson. Incomplete. Lilo Lang was covering Michael Jackson who had a 62-yard pass reception for a touchdown from Vinny Testaverde against the Steelers. That was an opportunity for Bernie Kozar to really pick up the first down here. Jackson was, even though he was lying on his back, could have had a chance to roll over. You see the first down marker. He was very close to it. I just don't know that after the broken ankle by uh, Bernie Kozar that he can still throw off his back foot and on the run the way that he once could. Brian Hansen on to punt once again to Glenn Milburn. Bumped and out of the end zone. A safety on the blocked punt by Reggie Rivers of the Broncos. And the curse of the Denver Broncos continues to haunt Bill Belichick and the Cleveland Browns. Reggie Rivers with a block of the Hanson punt for the safety. Nine, nothing. Your teeth aren't flat, are they? Of course not. If they were, a flat brush would be ideal. But since your teeth are shaped like this, we designed our brush like this. Introducing Crest Complete. Your dentist uses special instruments that get between teeth. Crest Complete gets between two, up to 37% farther than the leading flat bristle brush. So to help maintain a dentist clean at home, get new Crest Complete. Only Crest could make a brush this complete. Other laser printers are still playing leapfrog, trying to reach the standards set by Hewlett Packard. But no matter how hard they try, they keep falling short. 
of the original. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. I want the truth, not a song and dance. I want better, not more expensive. I want a car I can afford and like. Hey, I just want my money's worth. Okay, actually, I want more than my money's worth. Special teams, a winner for the Browns last week. Will it cost them today? You're going to see Reggie Rivers right here just shoot the gap as they try and turn out. And that left Brian Kinch in the center on an island. You see him make a late grab, a great stab, late stab to try and catch Reggie Rivers, but it was too late. He had the block. On the free kick, Hanson's punt will be taken by Milburn at the 22. Milburn spun around, and the momentum takes him down at about the 43-yard line. 16-yard return. Steve Everett hit him pretty hard, knocked him off his feet. The two rookies collided. Watch Brian Kinch in the center just try and make a late grab. He knows he's in trouble. Tried to get a hand on Reggie Rivers, but it was too late. You can't let somebody come right up the gut. Mike Caldwell, who was playing the guard on the punt team, turned out, and that's what opened up the gap. There's Kinchin. 8.52 now left in the first half as the Denver lead extends to 9 0, and the Broncos whip the ball at their own 38. Bernstein and Del Pino in the eye. Bernstein, the tailback. And pitch to it. Not only to the 40, a gain of two. Clay Matthews led the defensive charge. Here's the Browns have made a pretty good adjustment to that sweep, which was netting about seven yards of carry for Bernstein in the first quarter. And it's interesting that uh, the Denver Broncos are having so much success running outside. You really think that with Clay Matthews and Pepper Johnson out there, a couple of veterans, that that would be one place you wouldn't want to run. But I guess the only other alternative, there's Nick Saban, the defensive coordinator, is to run it. Michael Dean Perry and Jerry Ball. So really, nowhere to go on this defense. Bernstein, nine carries, 37 yards thus far. Elway's pass complete to the 45. Bronco first down. Shannon Sharp snagged it. Covered by Terry Taylor, but a 14-yard gain. Shannon Sharp so tough. He's a big guy, but also has the speed to play on the outside. You see, just going for body position on the smaller Terry Taylor and it's tough enough to take the hit going over the middle. Really doesn't mind catching those passes over the middle. Kind of a tight end mentality. Sharp, the former Georgia State triple jump champion. Del Pino. Nice run. He's inside the Brown 40, twisted down at the 38 by Pepper Johnson. The Browns have to stop the bleeding now. They just have to stop the bleeding. They can't let the Broncos take it on in. I asked. Bernie Kozar, can you guys win a shootout type of game, a 30 to 27 type of game? He said God would have to intervene for us to win one of those, and we may have to unless this Browns defense stands up soon. Art Modell and the Cleveland fans have seen the Broncos dominate, leading 9 0, second and two here. And nothing doing for Del Pino. Jerry Ball stopped him in his tracks. So many teams this year have been double teaming Jerry Ball on running downs and double teaming Michael Dean Perry on passing downs. I don't think that Jerry Ball is quite the player that he once was because of some of the injuries, but when you line him up on the nose tackle, he is as good as anybody in football at stopping the run. Put a big bear hug on Del Pino that time. He's out of the game on third and two. Milbert in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Elway looked for him, but he's not open, so he goes across the middle and Russell wide open for the touchdown. Derek Russell wide open, a 38-yard score, and Elway is having a great first half. 
And Tom, Nick Saban was so concerned when I talked to him yesterday because of the fact that they had cut Everson Walls, that meant that they had to completely reshuffle his substitution package, which is his nickel package. You see, he had to move Steve on Moore up, put Del Spear back in at safety. Eric Turner was back there as they split the seam between Turner and Terry Taylor. He was very concerned, not physically against the Broncos, but mentally, were they ready to play because of the fact that Everson Walls was no longer there? Elam with the extra point attempt, and it's good. Elway, 38 yards to Russell. And the Broncos, 16 zip. Hey, Kristen, do you remember where we parked the van? There's only one minivan with a remote control sliding door, built in child seats, anti lock brakes, and driver's side airbag. Chevy Luna takes good care of your family. It even has composite body panels to take care of itself. Lumina. It looks different because it is different. Highway 421 near Spivey's Corner, North Carolina. Not exactly the place you expect to find a busy accounting firm like Duval and Dean. But thanks to Sprint Cellular and their car, Duval and Dean can handle clients clear across the state and still be there to take calls no matter where they are. There's one other advantage to doing business at 55 miles per hour. There's no fighting over who gets the window office. When I became my own boss, I also became my own employee. So now he tells me to make coffee, open the mail, make sure the copier's working. So I checked around and people said get a Canon personal copier. Canon has a unique single cartridge that contains the toner, developer, drum, and virtually all the moving parts. Change the cartridge and it's like getting a new copier. Buying it was such a good idea, I took him to lunch. Canon personal copiers. Call 1-800-4321-HOP. Next Sunday, a network premiere. Kurt Russell. You have a bad day here. Somebody dies. William Baldwin. I'm not going to quit, you hear me? Rebecca De Mornay, Jennifer Jason Lee. Show me a fire truck. Donald Sutherland and Robert De Niro. What would you like to do in the whole world? Burn it all. Ron Howard's Backdraft with never-before-seen footage at 8, 7 Central, NBC, next Sunday. Broncos with a 16-point first-half lead on Cleveland. Elam ready for the kickoff. Wolfley, Baldwin, and Vardell deep for Cleveland. With Baldwin standing at the goal line. Moves up to take it at the seven. And Randy Baldwin to the 26-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown pass to Derek Russell. Here's the value of a veteran quarterback. Watch John Elway look over here. Eric Turner will slide this way, and that's going to open it up for Derek Russell to come in behind. Elway looks left, stays left. Turner moves that way and then comes back. Derek Russell wide open. I don't know what happened to Terry Taylor on that play. Looked like he was trying to cover someone short and allowed Russell to get in behind. Elway's offense has really been percolating. Already has exceeded his touchdown pass total. And look at the domination by the Broncos. Cleveland in danger of being routed unless they get something going here. 23 yards of offense, and Kozar fumbles the snap. Dan Williams covered Kosar, who recovered the fumble. Did you see the other scores? Everything that can go wrong is going wrong. Remember, Bernie has a rookie center in there, Steve Everett. And, of course, he missed the three or four games. Don't know if they're having some trouble just getting hooked up. But right now, this Browns offense looks inept. In 13 plays, they have 16 yards rushing, 7 yards passing. A slip by Horde as he tried to get going, and he got free. Horde shakes a tackler dragged down in Bronco territory by Steve Atwater. Horde slipped shortly after he got the handoff, and then came free for 28 yards. The Browns are just going back to what they do best, and I think this is right. 
That's not the prettiest move I've ever seen, but Leroy Hort got the job done. He kind of stumbled and fumbled his way down the field, but a nice big gain, a good job inside. Bob Dahl and Steve Everett double teaming the nose and creating the hole for Leroy Hort. So that one run, 28 yards, exceeded the total offense for the Browns to that point. Ozark's pass batted down at the line of scrimmage by Carl Mecklenburg. Boy, Kozar has struggled in the first half. Carl Mecklenburg, the five-time Pro Bowler now, is tied for the team lead with sacks. Mecklenburg has just been doing this for so long. If you don't get there, he's working against Houston Hoover. Get your hands up, and I'm not uh, breaking any news and talking about the problems that Bernie Kozar has had with that sidearm delivery. Less than five minutes remaining first half. Waters defense has played well. Ford catches the ball in the front and then drops it. Well, they really look rusty after the week off. Well, it's tough when you're calling plays on the sideline and you've just broken off a 20 plus yard run and you come back with back to back passes on first and second down and then you're staring at third down and 10 you know quarterbacks love to throw on first down but you have to make it work you have to go complete those passes to for your offensive coordinators and play callers and Bill Belichick is that on this team to gain confidence lowest league total in completions and only one of six today bad and getting worse Kosar dumps it complete Leroy Horn with another big play. The ball came loose at the end, but they will say he was down at the 20-yard line. No fumble. The Broncos don't believe it, but the official signaled down. Tom, this is a very close call because Horn was not touched the first time that he went down. The second, they're going to give it to the Cleveland Browns. The second time is the is the issue. Was he touched when he hit the ground the second time before the ball came out? Good improvisation by Bernie Kozar just dumping the ball off to Leroy Horde. Now the first time he's going to fall will not be touched. Now he gets back up. That is very, very, very close to a fumble. Yeah, that could have very easily been ruled a fumble. Not touched, back up, ball free just as his knee hits. It was almost simultaneous, but it's 27 yards. Big play for the Browns, still in business. Here's Bardell on the draw, and the flags will stop the play. Brian Kenshin jumped the snap. Ball starts on number 88 offense. Prior to the snap, five yard penalty, first down. No play. Let's take a close look now. Leroy Horde goes down. Nobody will touch him. Then by the time he gets back up, does the knee hit the ground before the ball is stripped? No, it does not. That was a fumble. That was a fumble. Break for the Browns. Boy, do they need one of this. Yeah, game. they needed a break. They've just gotten a five-yard penalty, so it's first and 15. Four, please. Set the clock to 344 if you can. 344 he's calling for on the game clock. You see it at 339. The game clock should be set to 344. Thank you. Timekeeping all set. From the 25, Cleveland desperately needing points. They trail 16-0. Kozar chased as a flag down. Kozar spun down by Mike Cole. And a hold against the Browns. I believe this one might be on Gene Williams working against Shane Dronin. Holding number 64, nope. offense. 10-yard penalty. 
First down. Houston Hoover guilty of the hold. I don't know if it was on Burnett or not, but uh, Hoover, the guilty party. Free agent from Atlanta. On the far side, the left guard, 64 right there in the middle of your screen now. Working against the rookie, Dan Williams. Well, well, after a big play, the Browns have been headed in reverse. It's now first and 25. Ball all the way back to the Bronco 35-yard line. Ford, again, he slipped. He wasn't able to pull that trick again. He is stopped for no gain, which gives us a chance to check in at NFL Live. Jim Lampley has an update. All right, let's move south in Ohio to see what's happening in Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. O'Donnell trying to hit Ernie Mills in the flat. Darrell Williams picks it off of the Bengals, goes 97 yards. Then on the following possession, Pittsburgh fumbles. Schrader hits Query. It's 16-0 Bengals. And, Tom, you just knew that Shula would get a win today, didn't you? Yeah, with his dad set perhaps to uh, break the record, Jim... Uh son is getting in on the act and perhaps on the way to his first victory of the season. I believe that score. Against the Steelers no less. Who pounded them in Pittsburgh. Horde. That was ugly. You know Leroy Horde's had a couple of tough balls to try and catch but hasn't made exactly the greatest effort in the world to turn around and Get his hands on those footballs. You can see that offensively, this is not exactly what you would think of when you're talking about a team that's in first place in their division. This goes to show that you can win with defense and special teams right down the list towards the bottom in the National Football League offensively. Third and long and a delay of game penalty. This has become a uh, not too humorous comedy of errors. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, third down. Can a dog turn on you in a hurry? I met some of them down there, yeah, I believe they can, but it's amazing the way that this crowd and, the, and that this team has reacted after the bye week. Now, certainly they did not have a great game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, the two unbelievable punt returns by Eric Metcalf, but offensively, they had been on a little better roll than this. Just don't know if the bye week caused this many problems. Ernie Kosar, two of eight for 39 yards, and the penalties continue to mount. Complete to Horn, not much doing. Thrown back by Steve Atwater and others as we approach the two-minute warning. Tom, that was a good play, though, by the Browns. It gave them a chance to kick a field goal. And we'll see that when we come back to Cleveland Stadium. What is the color of a giggle? What is the sound of the sun going down? With three hours of breathtaking picture and sound on a single tape, an instant playback at the touch of a button, nothing portrays the moments that color our lives like a Sony Handycam camcorder. It's your life. Isn't it worth a Sony? You've waited for a Buick. You've waited for Buick quality at a low sticker price. You've waited for a car with Buick's reputation for safety. It seems you've waited for a century. Buick Century. With standard driver airbag, anti-lock brakes, power locks and windows, and more. All for $14,995. So don't wait any longer. See your Buick dealer today. This is the value of the century. Hey, the Miss Perfect pageant. Yeah. Miss Perfect. We're watching hockey. Pageants. Hockey. Let's watch hockey. both. Miller Lite presents the Miss Perfect Face-Off. Okay, Bob, Miss Georgia goes to the corner. She pays the price. Here's the puck coming loose. Nice shot. She scores! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, that'll be sashing two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Man. 
The NFL on NBC is brought to you by the new Chevy S-Series line of trucks. So new from the inside out, everything else is history. By Hager wrinkle-free cotton pants. 100% cotton, 0% wrinkles. By O'Doul's. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. And by Wendy's Super Value Menu and Value Priced Kids Meal. There's something for everyone. Most of the noise out of the dog pound today has been directed at the home team. Leland Brown's trailing the Denver Broncos at the two-minute warning first half. But the reason that was a good play, Tom, was sure it was third down and a couple of miles to go for a first down. All they were thinking was field goal, and with that little seven or eight-yard completion, set it up for Matt Stover. It's going to be a 49-yard attempt, as you see. Opponents have not missed against the Broncos. Stover trying to hit from 49 yards. Low kick, and it won't even be close. Never got there. And that pretty well sums up the first half so far for the Cleveland Browns. Timeout, 155 left, 16 nothing. This Heisman Trophy moment is brought to you by Wendy's International. John Heward was a coach's dream in 1964 when the Notre Dame quarterback took college football by surprise. Despite having barely played as an underclassman, Heward shined as a senior and wound up winning the Heisman over bigger names, thus creating a bit of a controversy. Heward began the season a virtual unknown, but ended it a Heisman Trophy winner. What's this? We're here for your birthday party! <laughs> That's next week. Oh, Ed. Does that mean there's no food? There's a Wendy's nearby. Now you're talking! <laughs> Everything on Wendy's super value menu is 99 cents each. Freshly made salads, hamburgers, hot off the grill, chili, delicious food you can only get here. Plus, for $1.99, get a hamburger kid's meal. Happy birthday! Look, we're twins! <laughs> Great. Wendy's, you don't pay more, you just get more. The problem with cotton pants is they come out of the dryer with all these wrinkles. But hey, Hager wrinkle-free cottons are 100% cotton. They come out of the dryer wrinkle-free. And really, really hot. Oh. Hager wrinkle-free cotton. 100% cotton, 0% wrinkles. At John Nuveen and Company, we believe our strongest bond is human. Call your advisor about Nuveen tax-free municipal bond funds or 1-800-4-NUVEEN. The Goodyear Blimp Spirit from nearby Akron, Ohio, braving the wintry temperatures today to give us the aerial views of Cleveland Stadium. And is it just me, or does it look especially drab when the home team trails 16 up? Chance for John Elway to get it going once again. Plenty of time for him. Boy, has Elway had a great first half. He has done very little wrong. Two touchdowns and a safety. For the Broncos, Glenn Milburn needs a couple. Stopped by Michael Dean Perry. Bill Belichick simply says that you're looking at the best quarterback in the National Football League. He leads the league in almost every offensive category. He's just played brilliantly this year. So happy to be in Jim Fossil's offense, his old Stanford offensive coordinator. that overhand toss to Shannon Sharp. Third catch of the day for Sharp. He's tackled by Randy Hilliard. The clock continues to roll toward the one-minute mark. Tom, if there's been a storyline in this first half, it has been the success that the Denver Broncos offense has had on third down against the nickel packages of the Cleveland Browns. And I don't want to labor the point, but Everson Walls not here, and that package has been shaken up. Third down play, Elway can't connect with Milburn. And the Broncos will have to punt with 46 seconds left in the half. I don't know if that's good or bad news for Cleveland. <laughs> Browns still have two timeouts remaining, so they'll get an opportunity to make it work. You know what they need, don't you? And if I'm the if I'm the Denver Broncos, I punt this one out of bounds. Yep. <laughs> if that guy doesn't beat me, nobody's going to beat me this afternoon. At least that's why <laughs> Tom Ruin's going to go over and say, "Now, coach, I think I'm going to punt this sucker out of bounds." 
and uh, we'll worry about their other teams when we come back in the second half. Recently, Boomer Esiason tried to bet a few of his friends that they couldn't eat just one Lay's potato chip. I bet you can't eat just one. And if I lose, I have to shave my, my head. Just head. Shave? What? Oh, come on, man. No. More and more people are discovering that Lay's are different. Hi, guys. So crunchy and perfectly golden, you can't eat just one. Hey, come on. Do I look stupid? Who's stupid enough to take that bet? Welcome to another day in the National Football League. Hello, I'm Jim Lafley. The two teams you're about to see... Today's Lay's. Now more than ever, bet you can't eat just one. 45 seconds left. The Broncos' Richard Smith had a little note for all of his special teamers, inviting them to a party with Eric Metcalf this week. Put a card in all the special teamers' locker, and it said, guys, feel free to destroy Eric Metcalf this week. I talked to him just before the game. He wasn't too happy that that one got out in the media, though. Metcalf wasn't too amused either, I don't think. <laughs> Bruin to punt. And he angles it toward the sideline. It's end over end. Bounces, yes, out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. We'll stay with us at halftime for the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Jim Lampley and Mike Ditka with all the scores and highlights. And look at Don Shula through the eyes of his past players all coming up at halftime on the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. You and uh, Mr. Lampley did some serious traveling. We may this have weekend. crossed in the night, you know. <laughs> some serious frequent flyer miles piled up. Did you come in on the blimp? <laughs> well, I no, I was the blimp, but I was on the uh, on the airplane. If they run this first place, this crowd is going to go crazy. Well, Elway, I mean, Kosar uh, is in the shotgun, and he has uh, three wide receivers in the game. Three wide receiver package for the Browns. And L.A. guns it to Metcalf, and what a great catch at the 46-yard line. What hand grab for 29 yards. There is a penalty marker on the play. And Houston Hoover looks like he's hot. If they end up calling a holding on that play, just a momentum killer going in here at halftime. You know when an offensive lineman takes his helmet off, he's mad. Those guys, they don't like the publicity. Sure sign, huh? They don't like attention. They don't like you to know that they're even out there. They got their helmet off. They know they're on TV. He would probably like a helmet about now. To hit somebody. There's with. no foul on the play. There is no unnecessary roughness. First down. See, that's a good thing there. You take your helmet off and you scare the officials. That was a good play by Houston Hoover. I hope he doesn't hear that you said that. But forget about that and Houston Hoover. This catch is unbelievable. Eric Metcalf continues to amaze. 20 seconds left. Kozar to Horde. Nothing there. They were ready for that. It only got him three or four yards, and he's still in bounds. Atwater makes the tackle. Timeout, 14 seconds left. Coming up tonight on NBC, an all-new eyewitness video. Incredible footage of criminals caught on hidden camera, followed by an all-new Sequest adventure. Then Patty Duke and Martin Sheen star in a powerful thriller about a mother trying to bring her son's killer to justice. A suspenseful world premiere motion picture event based on a true story, a matter of justice. All coming up tonight on NBC. Tom, there was significance to that play in which Houston Hoover argued his way out of that penalty if you will because it stopped the clock and the Browns did not have to burn a timeout so now with 14 seconds left they can throw another pass play and if it's completed over the middle then they'll still be able to take the timeout and kick the field goal but because of the way that Matt Stover was so short on that first one you would think that he's going to be have to be somewhere close to the 30 yard line here in order to have a chance and they need a pass play of about 12 yards. Balls at the 42 of the Broncos, who lead 16-0. Kozar's in big trouble. And he's sacked by Mecklenburg. They use their final timeout with eight seconds left. And the Browns need to hustle back to the ball because this clock's going to start. They're down to five. 
I that thought they, they, used, I the thought they called timeout already. But they, you know, that's a poor play by that Browns offense. They didn't hustle back to the line of scrimmage. They could have just dumped the ball, stopped the clock, and preserved that timeout. Now they've got no choice but to throw it down the field or try to work it out of bounds. Poor hustle by the Browns. As the Cleveland Browns ran this play, now when the sack occurs, that's Carl Mecklenburg with the sack. See, they stopped the clock. They've got eight seconds left. Now as a team, you've got to sprint back to the line of scrimmage because Bernie Kozar can take it and throw it right down in the ground. You save your time out. You have seven seconds on the clock. They fool around. As the clock ticks down. They have to burn their time out. Now almost no choice but to try and throw the alley-oop on down the field. Jackson Tillman Carrier all set to Kozar's right. Just five seconds remaining. Broncos are offside. This is a free play. Kozar heaves for the end zone. And it's intercepted by Atwater. But it looked like the Broncos were offside. And they'll get another shot. The clock has expired, but the half cannot end on a defensive penalty. Offside, number 99, defense. Defensive foul on the last play of the half. Untimed down, it'll be third down again, Cleveland. One untimed down. Right in the middle of your screen, and the significance now is that you also moved the ball five yards closer. Bernie came up a little short with that throw down to about the three or four yard line. Now, if he can buy some time in that pocket, he should be able to make the throw into the end zone. Shane Burnett offside, so another chance for Kosar and the Cleveland offense. This will come with no time remaining on the clock. And again, same formation. Tillman, Jackson, Carrier all wide to the right, and Metcalf. Another flag is down. Same play for the end zone. Jump ball and incomplete. This one may be a legal motion on the Browns, which would end the half. There were about three Browns that jumped that simultaneous motion and is going to be caught. And you see Shane Dronette saying, nah, baby, <laughs> we don't want that one. We have an illegal shift on the offense. Offensive foul on the last play of the half. Penalty is declined. The half is over. And so the first half will come to an end. It was a dismal first half for the Cleveland Browns offense. Denver Broncos with two Elway touchdown passes and a safety leading 16-0. Now let's go to the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza, where you always get great pizza plus something for nothing. We welcome those of you who are in the dog pound to watch Denver Broncos taking a 16-0 lead over the Cleveland Browns at halftime. More of the same Mike Ditka for the Browns who have been behind the eight ball traditionally against Elway over the years at home. He's the only one that has a whammy on him. Everybody else that goes into that stadium gets beat up and they do a great job against him. But Elway is something else. And I tell you what he's getting. He's getting more and more used to the new offense they're running up in Denver and they're getting better at it. And they keep getting better at it. They're going to be hard to beat in the stretch. Trailing 16 to nothing and with Kozar limited in the game at QB. They've got to go to Eric Metcalf to try to get him back in the game. Well, he's got to be one of them. There's no question about it. But, you know, 16 nothing. what's going to happen? They're not going to be content to run the ball. I, I'll, I'll bet on that. And, and they're going to try to throw the ball out. And right now, I just don't see Bernie getting the job done. Cleveland not quite explosive enough. Meanwhile, elsewhere today, the Giants are in Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Troy Aikman red hot in the first half, 10 of 10 to start the game, 140 yards and two TDs, both of them long ones to Harper. And at halftime, it is 17-6 Cowboys over the Giants. Let's take a look at what's happening in the Astrodome, where the Oilers are knocking on the door of getting back into the AFC Central Division. They lead 19-7 over the Seattle Seahawks in the second quarter. Buddy Ryan watching as his defense tries to hold a 7-0 lead in the first quarter, but they couldn't do it. As Rick Meyer was equal to the task, lofting one to Kelvin Martin, who made the catch despite pass interference on Steve Jackson, an easy 53-yard touchdown that made it 7-7 at that point. But Warren Moon was red hot in the first half, 20 of 30. Second TD pass the game here to Ernest Givens for 14 yards. PAT was no good. 
13-7 at that point. Since then, two more Del Greco field goals have given the Oilers a 19-7 lead. And with Cleveland losing, and with Pittsburgh losing, as we'll see later, the Oilers are once again in good position to get back into the race. Well, they've got a very favorable schedule, and, and they're doing the right things now. If they quit bickering down there, this football team's got a chance to win the Central Division. But who knows if they'll quit bickering. Maybe after today, they'll find something else to complain about. I don't know. I hope they don't, because I think there's too much talent on the football team, Jimmy. That If they keep playing the way they are, it's going to be hard to beat them in that division. All right, let's take a look at what's happening in Foxborough, where the Patriots and the Bills are locked up nothing-nothing at halftime. Scott Seacules has suffered a separated shoulder for the Patriots. He has been replaced by Drew Bledsoe at quarterback, so the number one draft choice in the whole league is back on the field to play for the Parcells Pats. Meanwhile, in Minnesota, in the Metrodome, the San Diego Chargers are trying to mount the same kind of mid-season win streak that pushed them into the playoffs a year ago. They lead 10-3 at this point, despite... A clean bill of health for Gino Toretta. Jim McMahon is injured and inactive today. Sean Salisbury gets the start. Chargers mount the first scoring drive. John Fries to Anthony Miller for 24 yards down to the Viking 38-yard line. That would ultimately set up this three-yard Marion Butts touchdown, which is the only TD of the game. A 7-0 Charger lead at this point. And Mike, they got a big win over the Raiders last week. Perhaps that is going to rekindle the fire in San Diego. Well, I, I think that, that win last week could be the catalyst for their season, really. Now, if they start playing the way they're, you know, the, they played the second half of last year with a good defense and an opportunistic offense, but they're running the ball a little better. Again, when you run the ball a little better, a lot of good things are going to happen for you, and they're pushing the ball down the field as a result of it. All right, we told you about the trouble that Pittsburgh has been having at the hands of Cincinnati. Now the Steelers, with the second touchdown, have gotten to within 16-14 as they approach halftime in that game. At one point, it was Bengals 16-0 as Dave Shula looks for his first victory of the year. And here's how it happened. It was 3-0 on a Pelfrey field goal. Steelers were trying to go ahead. Neil O'Donnell's pass in the flat intended to Ernie Mills is picked off by Darrell Williams. He takes it 97 yards for a touchdown. They missed the PAT. But on the next possession, the Steelers fumbled the snap. Cincinnati got the football back, and Schrader hit Jeff Query from seven yards out. Then it was 16-0. Then O'Donnell found Eric Green across the middle. He went 71 yards for the score. Steelers closed to 16-7, and that play seemed to light a fire under the Steelers. He got it back and moved at the end of the half for this. Hodge touchdown catch, nine yards from Neil O'Donnell to get back to within 16-14. Not as big a lead as the Bengals would like to have had at halftime. Well, time. you know, again, Pittsburgh had some bad breaks in the first half. They made a mistake down there. I, I don't, you know, with the running game they have, I don't know why you throw it on first down down there, but they did. But they're, they're coming back now. Maybe they can win the game. I don't know. Cincinnati's not that bad a football team. Jim, when you get in the NFL week after week, any team can beat any team. So I, I don't see where it's a big surprise that they were ahead 16-0 in the football game. Some profundity I never heard before. Any I team can well, beat any, any team in well, the NFL? Thing, both, everybody puts their pants on the same way. Oh, unbelievable. We'll have indeed, to take it one day at indeed. a time from here on out. Meanwhile, the Lions are taking it one field goal at a time at home against the Buccaneers. A lot of yards for Barry Sanders in the first half, but only the two Hanson field goals, 6 nothing Lions over the Bucks. Up next, we'll talk about the Dolphins' Don Shula, a long-time one-pants-leg-at-a-time kind of a guy, closing in on the all-time record for coaching victories. That'll be after this message from the NFL and a word from your local station. That was me, Haven Moses, receiver for the Broncos at Red Rocks, appearing in the United Way public service spot. We met Jerry. Her story started back in 1978 when she was just a child. The doctors diagnosed a rare form of cancer in her eyes. Can any of us imagine the choice Jerry's parents had to make to remove her eyes or lose her life to cancer? They chose life, and the little girl came to the United Way's supported program for the blind. Jerry went on to attend high school and get top grades. And today, she's an active, productive part of our community. Now, I want you to meet Jerry. Jerry, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Haven. I'd like to thank all the people that have given throughout the years. Thanks to you, it really does help all of us. Now more than ever, the United Way, helping where help is needed most. This message furnished by the National Football League. Monday, big news from the Playboy Mansion. The Fresh Prince's cousins posing nude. One problem, her chaperone at the party, he needs a chaperone of his own. What would it take for a guy like me to get next to a girl like you? Five years and six figures. Then the Blossom Boys show up and their every fantasy comes true. Bingo. Whoa. A special Fresh Prince Blossom Hour, NBC Monday.
a husband's perfect crime. He murdered our daughter, now he's trying to run away. Based on the true story of one family's determined fight to stop him, the Unsolved Mysteries movie, NBC Tuesday. A lot of champagne glasses have been used to prove how smooth a car can be at high speed. Surely, a toast is in order for a truck that can do the same. New Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. Experience how the rules have changed. Take the ultimate test drive at your nearest Dodge dealer. Today, Sally Benson's high-efficiency natural gas water heater helped wash four loads of laundry, two loads of dishes, three kids, and her husband, Ted. All day long, it gave them all the hot water they needed for much less than the cost of electricity. And because natural gas is cleaner than oil or coal-generated electricity, it's better for the environment. And that makes Sally feel very good. A special preview of the swimsuit issue of Inside Sports on the next E.T. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza, where you always get great pizza, plus something for nothing. Welcome back. As you may know, it's a doubleheader day here on NBC. Some of you will see the Raiders and the Bears in the late game. Others will see the Dolphins and the Jets. And in that one, of course, Don Shula goes for career win number 325. If he gets it, he passes George Hallis as the National Football League's winningest coach. We got the comments of some people who have spent time with a coaching legend. Prepared when you come into meetings to work hard, when you're on a practice field working hard, and I think that directly relates to wins on a football field. I remember one time here in Baltimore when Don Shula was still playing with us. Uh, they had fourth down and they went for the inches and they didn't make it. And the house right in front of the Bears bench was standing there and the house is screaming at the official. And Shula said, Mr. Howell, excuse me. He said, but you know, you embarrassed me because. I have. There's no way that anybody's ever going to come close, in my opinion, of touching what Don has accomplished. From one coaching legend to another who appreciates how hard it was to win 100 games in the NFL, much less 300, a Shula Hallmark over the years working with backup quarterbacks. Will Scott Mitchell come down to earth? I don't think so. I, I really think it starts at the top, and I think that's been stated already. I think Don has a good offense. He's got some key people at, the, at his new receivers. He's got a new quarterback, got a new running back in Kirby. The only guy that has really been there is tight end Jackson. So he's working with some new people, pretty solid offensive line. I think the key to Miami's success this year is going to be their defense. I, th I don't think Mitchell's going to be the factor. If their defense can hold up and play good football, I think they'll be there at the end. That's the way it was when Tom Matty was quarterbacking, when Earl Morrow was quarterbacking. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Shula's Dolphins against the Jets later today and our NFL Live halftime activities continue. Tonight, eyewitness video used to trap criminals, see arrests go down, meet real life heroes with host John Forsythe. Eyewitness video, NBC Tonight.
tonight on Sequest. Welcome to the Bermuda Triangle. Going down hard. Hold on. Lost inside the mysterious triangle, and only Darwin can lead them back. Darwin, help Lucas. We've got to find them. They've forgotten about us. Sequest at 8, 7 Central, NBC Tonight. Years ago, when her mom was having a new baby, Susie thought the nurse was great. Of course, Blue Cross paid the hospital bill, and Susie paid close attention. Now, Dr. Sue delivers good news for others. She has a great nurse to help her, and she's holding down costs as a Super Blue doctor. Blue Cross covers all generations, and Super Blue can save money for your business. Call for a quote. Tammy Faye Baker's amazing wedding, a world exclusive on A Current Affair. That'll be after these messages from your local station. Back with you. John Elway was right on the money for the entire opening two periods of the game. What can Cleveland do to sort of turn their offense around a surprisingly flat performance in that first half?